This is One Man's Family. One Man's Family is dedicated to the mothers and fathers of the younger generation and to their bewildering offspring. Today transcribed, we present Chapter 13, Book 72, entitled Christmas Morning with the Barbers. It is Christmas morning in Seacliff, and the wintry sunrise is breaking through the mists over San Francisco and splashing bright yellow shadows over the fir trees and the green lawns. In the Barber family home, where the family held their Christmas Eve celebration last evening, there are two lighted windows. In the kitchen, Mrs. Kettleman is preparing coffee for an early riser. And in the master bedroom, Fanny Barber has just reached sleepily above her to turn on a bed lamp and look at the bedside electric clock. Rousing from a deep sleep, Henry opens his eyes. <laughs> what time is it, Fanny? 7.18, Henry. Yes, the sun's just coming up. Mm. Merry Christmas, Henry. Yes. My dear, well, well, Merry Christmas, so it is. It's going to be a lovely day. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, Henry, thank you for my gift. <laughs> you thanked me last night, my dear. Twice. Three times, I think. I've always loved Topaz. <laughs> I had the jewel to make it up especially for you, Fanny. I said I want a sparkling pin with an unusual gold background. I wanted it to, ha to have a, a jaunty air about it. That's what's so intriguing about it, Henry. When I opened the box, I thought, what a gay-looking, what a smiling sort of pin. Fanny, you slept with it pinned to your nightgown. Well, I couldn't bear to put it away, Henry. <laughs> I'm glad you like it so much. <laughs> Wasn't that a Christmas Eve, though? Eh? Paul was more like himself last night. Did you notice, Fanny? Yes, I was so surprised. You know, when we were watching the children unwrap their presents, he, he patted me on the arm in a very comradely way and... We, we, we didn't say anything, of course, but I had a premonition. I thought, I thought, Paul will come back to us. I could not. I, I couldn't bear it, Fanny, if he should marry that woman and move out of the home. We're not going to talk about it today. You promise me. Yes, yes. yes. Look at the yellow sunlight through our blinds, Fanny. It's going to be one of those sunny Christmas days, and we'll have all the family around again. Yes, yes, I, I love the holidays. No, one would never guess it. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Is it possible that you and I have lived together for half a century and more? Where do those years go, Henry? I don't know, Fanny. Half a century is the merest wink of time. You are still my young wife, and we have just settled down to raise a family. I, I can't believe that so many years have gone. Can you? I don't feel a bit different inside, Henry. Neither do I, Fanny. Well, I'm many years, uh, times a grandfather. My eldest son is the, is the age that I feel myself to be. It's the most bewildering thing because, because you're right. Inside. I don't feel any older than I did when we moved into this house 30 years ago. <sighs> my dear, my dear. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's one thing I want to say to you, Fanny. I have made a resolution for the new year. Now, here it'll be 1950. 1950. And I am simply not going to fuss so much about little unimportant things. Oh, good, Henry. <laughs> I fuss a good deal, Henry, don't I? Well... <laughs> I was thinking last night when all the turmoil and confusion was beginning to irritate me a little. I, I was thinking, now, tomorrow when they come back for breakfast and for Nicholas's phone call... I'll not fuss about anything, no matter how noisy the children are. Oh, that's the only way a man shows his age, fussing. So, in 1950, I shall do it no more, friend. No, as a matter of fact, I shall start today. Today, Christmas, 1949. Eh? <laughs> It'll be easy for you today, Henry. Huh? You have a joke on me? No, but we did have a perfectly brilliant idea last evening. Hazel and Claudia and Dan and I... <laughs> Now, Fanny, what are you up to? Huh? Hazel said father will be fit to be tied with the children all swarming around when the long-distance call comes from England. So, so the children yeah. not be here for breakfast, Henry. Oh, that seems too bad. Right? Dan has taken them all to Golden Gate Park this morning. That's why I'm so glad it turned out to be a nice, sunshiny day. You mean, Fanny, that I, I fussed so much that you felt that you... Oh, no, no. It just seemed better for everybody. You aren't the only one who want quiet for the phone call. 
Claudia does, too. Yes, yes, that was very wise. Yes, yes, I see. Well, you'll find that I'll be an easier man to live with in 1950, Fanny. That's a promise. Uh, I say the children will come by today, though, eh? Oh, surely they'll come by this afternoon. Oh, now the sun is really up. Look, Henry. Uh, <laughs> Fanny... Isn't this a nice old bedroom? Eh? Isn't this a comfortable old bed? <laughs> what fortunate people we are. Eh? <laughs> yes, who is this? Merry Christmas. Fevers, come in. Come in, my boy. Merry Christmas to you. Uh, Merry Christmas. Why, Clifford, how nice of you. I said to Mrs. Kettleman, I said, how is it your orange juice always tastes better than other people's orange juice? And she said she chills the oranges and not the juice, that's why. <laughs> Clifford, how very thoughtful. Uh, put it right down there. Uh, and coffee, too. Mm, that's right. Now, this is a perfect morning. <clears throat> when I woke up and saw that sunrise, I thought, golly, wouldn't it be swell if somebody would walk in now with orange juice and coffee? Yep, nobody did. <laughs> Here, Henry, sit up. Here's your juice. Uh, thank you, Mary. So I thought it's Christmas. Do unto others as you wish somebody would do unto you. And here we are. Oh, hey, Mom, you're wearing your pants. <laughs> she wore it all night, Cliff. I know just how you feel, Mom. Anyone to sleep in his baseball uniform instead of pajamas. <laughs> oh, where are you going, Sonny? Eh? I got another tray out there. Paul's going to get some service, too, this Christmas morning. <laughs> oh, that's nice, Clifford. Oh, thank you. Where's Andy? He's having breakfast. Dan's going to pick him up in a little while. See you later. Merry Christmas. Thank you, my boy. Merry Christmas. Merry <laughs> Christmas. <laughs> Oh, he looked so happy, didn't he, Henry? Yes, yes, yes. He was happy because he was doing this for you and for me and for Paul. And that's the secret, eh, Fanny? Doing things for other people. Ah, that was a swell cup of coffee. Thanks a lot, Cliff. Got your eyes open now? Uh-huh. Uh, yes. Christmas Day. Another year almost over. Yeah, mm-hmm. A lot of things happened in 49, Paul. Yeah. Never a dull moment, eh? And next year sometime you'll be a married man. Seems funny somehow to think of you as married, you know that? Hmm. Been a bachelor a good long stretch, no doubt about that. But you've certainly found the right girl. I like her more every time I see her. So does Roberta. She really is wonderful, isn't she? Oh, it's perfect for you. I'm busting my buttons this villain news you're engaged. How much long are you going to keep it a secret? Oh, it isn't we want to keep it a secret exactly. We just decided it'd be better to wait till after the holidays. We want to upset everybody right at Christmas time. It was Chris's idea realize how awkward it'd be if we announced it right now. Mm, yeah, I suppose it would. Doggone, it's just a darn shame, that's all. What? You know perfectly well what. Don't give me that. Grand girl like Chris, and you can't even have her in your, in your own house for Christmas. The girl you're going to marry, just because Dad is so stubborn. It doesn't make sense, Paul. Yeah, it's tough, all right. Well, don't you think when you tell the family it'll be all right, though? Dad's awful hard-headed, but I think you'll come around, don't you? <laughs> no, no, no. From the things he's said, it looks pretty doubtful. Yeah, but he always kicks up a fuss at first about practically anything is new or different. Look at the way he used to go on about Nicolette. Now he's crazy about her. Same thing when I first started going with Roberta. Ranted and raved, and then after he got to know her, he was all for her. Maybe the same thing will happen to Chris. Well, that's what I've been hoping, of course. And I bet you as soon as Mom finds out you're going to marry her, she'll bring Dad around. Hmm. Hmm, could be. Uh, Don't let it get you down, son. (laughs) Don't worry. I won't. Dad and the whole family put together aren't going to stop this, believe me. Now you're talking. You got one member of the family backing you up anyway. I know, Cliff. You've helped a lot, and I appreciate it, too. Hey, I better begin to stir. What time is it? Mm, about 7.30, I guess. Uh, Mickey's phoning at 10, wasn't that it? Yeah, uh-huh. 10 our time. Everybody's coming over so they can wish him a Merry Christmas. All the grown-ups, that is. <laughs> we had enough kids here yesterday for the tree to last us for a while. They had a wonderful time, didn't they? Well, if you can judge by the noise they made this year, dear. <laughs> yeah, I wonder if Chris is up yet. I think I'll phone her and wish her a Merry Christmas. Well, you didn't get to see her at all yesterday, did you? Just for a few minutes. We thought it'd be the wise thing if I spent Christmas Eve here so as not to cause the family upset. Chris and I will have our Christmas today. As soon as we talk to Nikki and get the family breakfast over, I'll duck out as gracefully as possible. Give me the phone, will you? I'll mm-hmm. call her. Yeah. Hey, here you are. Thanks. Want me to get out, lover boy? Hey, you want to get hit with this phone? <laughs> no, I don't want you to get out. Why would I? Well, you know how it is when two people... Uh, hello. Chris? Merry Christmas. <laughs> Thank you. I wake you up? You yeah, have. That's pretty ambitious. It's good to hear your voice, too. Hiya, honey. That was Cliff. He's up here in the studio with me. He brought me some coffee. Sure, just a second. She wants to say hello. Here. All right. Merry Christmas, gorgeous. Oh, gee, thanks, Chris. 
Wonderful. Yeah, a lot of kids, you know, but it was fun. <laughs> yeah. I understand you and Paul are celebrating Christmas today. Uh-huh. Well, you've got a lot to celebrate, all right. You know how I feel. It couldn't happen to two nicer people. Hey, I didn't mean for you to talk all day. <laughs> mm, your boyfriend's getting impatient. <laughs> okay, be seeing you. Bye. <laughs> yeah. Hello, Chris. <laughs> she says you're sweet. <laughs> Good. I have lots to tell you, but I'll wait till I come over there. Oh, probably around noon. Okay? Yes, I do. Very, very much. All right. Bye, Chris. I'm kind of afraid I cramped your style being here. My dear young brother, I don't make love over a phone, so you did no such thing. I... <laughs> yes, come in. Oh, hi, Dad. Merry Christmas. Yeah, Merry Christmas. Well, come on in. I'm only going to stay a second. Just slipped on a robe. <laughs> Got to get dressed. Sit here, Dad. No, no, I, I only came up to... Uh, well, your mother and I were talking this morning about what a fine day we had yesterday, Paul. I wanted you to know how happy you made her. Well, yes, yes. How happy you made me by, by being here. You made us feel that the family was together again. That we... Uh, that you were back with us in spirit as well as... Uh, your presence meant a great deal to us. Thank you, Dad. Uh, I must get dressed. We, we want to be ready when Claudia and all of them arrive. Yes, it would be nice to talk to Nicholas. Yeah, miss him. His absence is the only thing missing from an otherwise perfect day. Oh, I bet Claude's excited about talking to Nicky. Probably all she could think about this morning was that phone call. Just wait till I straighten the living room and we'll go, Joan. We must watch the time. Oh, I'm watching it. There's no hurry, Claudia. I made up a list of things to talk to Nicky about, and now I've lost it. Why in the world would you make a list, Mother? <laughs> well, you know how it is with long-distance phone calls. You plan all sorts of sensible things to say and make up your mind this time you're going to have an intelligent conversation. But when you actually pick up the phone, your mind simply goes blank. <laughs> and all you think about is the distance and the difference in time and all that. <laughs> and then you say, what time is it over there? And how's the weather? <laughs> oh, people always raise their voices, too. As if that had helped. Well, I know what I'm going to say to Nikki. I'll just tell him how much I love my watch. And don't you worry about the time either, because I know what time it is from minute to minute. It is pretty, isn't it? Mm, I'll just wear it to parties. I'll keep my old watch for every day. Well, I'll run upstairs now and straighten things there. Oh, it's all done. But Oh, yeah. I made all the beds up before I came down. And I did the breakfast dishes, too, while you were dressing. Well, Joan, thank you. You've been a very enterprising young lady this morning. When did you get up, anyway? <laughs> With the sunrise. Oh, goodness, what time was that? Oh, a little after seven. Mm, it was beautiful. I watched the light creeping over the hills to the ocean. I felt... I felt wonderful this morning. I guess it's the Christmas spirit or something. You were very nice to your grandfather last night. I was proud of you. Well, he was better last night. He wasn't fussing at people. I almost felt sorry for him. Why? Oh, I don't know. He tried so hard to be nice. He wanted to be friends with Paul, but he couldn't be, really. Oh, I don't know... I watched them together. I think Paul was sorry for him, too, in a way. Why do you say that? Well, Uncle Paul patted him on the shoulder once. It was almost as if he was thinking, oh, that Grandfather was a stubborn old man, but sort of nice even so. When was all this? Oh, when the little kids were opening up the presents. It was strange, sort of. Uncle Paul looked kind of sad and amused and sorry for him. I got a queer feeling that Paul was saying goodbye. Oh, Joan, you're dramatizing. No, no, it, it was just something I felt. For a minute there, Grandfather looked different to me, too. He's really a wonderful old man, Joan. The world is changing all around him, but he stands for something fine. He stands all right. He just planted. <laughs> Not Joan. But, Claudia, he's wrong so often. Not so often as many people I've come to think. Well, he's wrong about Christine and Paul. And I'm ashamed to hold family the way they're acting. I tried to tell you why I can't do anything about Christine and Paul. Surely you understand, Joan. Well, you're so vague, though. You weren't in love with Christine's brother, were you? Is that what you're trying to tell me? I can't cultivate the fromes, that's all. I just can't do it. There are ramifications and subtleties. I just can't go into it. Here, let me just say this. There are always difficult choices to make all your life long. And if to be loyal to my husband, I have to seem disloyal to my brother Paul, well, then my husband is the one I have to think about. That's the way it has to be. Did you ever read a line in the Bible, Whither thou goest, I will go? Yes, it's from the book of Ruth. Well, that's it. 
Come now, we'll be on our way. Let's get our coats. Oh, I'll get them. I'll wear the fur coat. It's in the front closet. Yeah, I've got it. Oh, my gloves, my purse. Oh, I'm so excited. Here you are, Claudia. Oh, thanks, dear. Just put it over my shoulder. What are you looking so thoughtful about? Huh? Here, let me help you with yours. Oh, someone at the door. Well, we just can't let anything delay us Well, now. there's still lots of time. I'll go see who it is. Oh, no. Have I got everything? Oh, Merry Christmas, Hazel. Merry Christmas. Oh, good morning, Hazel. Merry Christmas. That noisy expedition just left for Golden Gate Park. I thought I'd come by and walk over with you. Glad you did. We were just ready to go. Aren't you excited about talking to Nicky? Oh, I'm all right now, but I'll probably weep when I hear his voice. <laughs> What are you looking for? My gloves, darn it. I just had them. Have you looked in your left hand? <laughs> oh, I guess I am a little jittery. Nicky would be flattered if he knew. Oh, I've never in my life missed Nicky so much. Make sure the door's locked, Joan. Oh, yeah, I fixed the catch. Mm, what a sparkling, lovely Christmas day, isn't it, though? Mm, I saw the sunrise. Oh, it was beautiful this morning. It's nice we're all to be together again today. Is Nicolette coming over, do you know, Claude? I don't know just how Jack and Betty were going to work that out. Somebody will have to stay with the triplets. I think we've done pretty well to get everything all organized this early, don't you, Nicolette? Yes, indeed we have, Betty. Oh, did you ever see so much paper and ribbons? I've saved all the nice ribbon. We can press it out and use it for wrapping presents next year. a girl, Nicolette. Watch the pennies for the poor old Jack Barbers. Jack, why don't you put down that book and get ready? We have to be over at Father Barber's before too long. Oh, I can be ready in two shakes. We got it on the rest of them. We only have to go through the heads. But we don't want to be late for Nicky's phone call. We won't. This is Christmas. Don't rush me. What are you reading, anyway? He has been reading all the books the children got for Christmas. My, they got a lot of nice ones, didn't they? Well, I don't know. They look pretty, but they're not so hot when you get into them. <laughs> Honestly, isn't that just like a man, Nicolette? He puts up a big howl about reading to the children at night. And here he spent practically all morning reading the books they got for Christmas. Yes, Jack, if you didn't read them now, you'd have the excitement of wondering what was going to happen when you read them to the girls. Oh, you got me wrong. I'm not reading these because I like them. This is research. Oh, Jack. Well, I'm not kidding, Betty. I'm trying to find something to take the place of Peter Rabbit and Whimsy Mouse. <laughs> I don't know, though. From what I've seen of most of these, I think I'd just as soon go on with dear old Whimsy. I ask you, who writes things like this? They're not written for you. They're written for children. If you like the books, you don't suppose the children would, do you? I don't know about that, doggone it. We got smart kids. They'd probably like something a little more intelligent. Of course. Something like Whimsy Mouse. <laughs> but just the same, listen to this. Little Chucky Chipmunk peeked out from behind a log. His home was in the forest. Isn't that silly? Where else would his home be? He's not going to live in a tent, is he? Or an igloo? <laughs> <laughs> what difference does it make if the children like it? It stimulates their imagination, Jack. Mm, could be. Little Chucky Chipmunk peeped out from behind a log. Fine thing for a lawyer to sharpen his mind on. I ought to be reading about a race jesti and the quid pro quo. Well, if you ask me, Chucky Chipmunk makes more sense than all that law Latin does. I think so, too, Betty. Okay, one lone man can't win over a whole house full of women. Oh, you poor abused man. Give me a kiss. It's Christmas and you haven't kissed me once today. That's it. Now smile and think about all the nice presents we got. <laughs> yeah, we did. So what'd you get, Nicolette? I'm so busy with our stuff, I never did get to see your present. Oh, I received so many wonderful things, I wouldn't know where to begin. Everybody was so generous. They, they gave me too much, far too much. I would be embarrassed, but I know each gift was given with the heart. All the barbers are so good to me. What did Paul give you? This bracelet I am wearing. See? Isn't it beautiful? She showed it to you last night, Jack. Don't you remember? Oh, did she? I guess I was too excited. What are those stones? Amethyst. That's my birthstone. I think it was sweet that Paul remembered that. But everybody remembers to do thoughtful things in this family. Yeah, we got a few thoughtful things ourselves. Some of them were a little too thoughtful, maybe. Why, Jack, what a hard thing to say. What are you talking about? I'm only kidding, Betty. I couldn't help but notice, though, that we got a lot of stuff that we've borrowed off and on. I wondered if it was a gentle hint. Big roaster. Won't have to borrow Claude's anymore. Did she give us that? Of course. She wouldn't have known we needed it if we hadn't borrowed hers. Hmm, didn't think of that. It's not a bad idea. We ought to borrow her cad. <laughs> <laughs> Jack, you're making it all sound so commercial. Well, this is a practical world, Betty. Might as well be practical. All right, Mr. Practical. You can start right now by getting ready. Say, what are we going to do with the triplets? Haul them over with us? <laughs> too bad we couldn't have farmed them out with Dan, too. No, no. I will stay here with the baby. You two go over. You'll want to talk to Nikki. You'll do no such thing. They're sleeping peacefully, and one of us can run right back after he phones. Nikki, you want to say hello to you, too, Nicolette? Sure he will. Heck, it's only through the hedge. 
Won't hurt to leave them for a few minutes. Start them early to be independent. That's my motto. When you got six kids, they ought to be made to fend for themselves while they're still in the crib. That's fine talk, but those little darlings are going to be a long time before they do any fending for themselves. But they are getting pretty lively, I will admit that. They're lively in the lungs. Wow, did they set up a caterwauling last night over at the house? I don't blame them. They were kept up too late. They're worn out today. But didn't they look cute last night when Father Barber held them? Yeah, everything was fine until they decided to yell out in unison. He didn't like that much. And he's going to like it less if we're late, Jack. You know how he goes on when anybody walks in late when he's planned something. And here it is, 9.45, and nobody's here. Now, Henry, I thought you weren't going to fuss. Honey, my dear, I made a remark that it's a quarter to ten. Yes, over there in London, Nicholas must be waiting at the telephone, Fanny. Now, what if the call comes through, eh? He'll say, Claudia, are you there? And I'll have to explain that Claudia isn't even here. Oh, that's fussing, if I ever heard it. It could happen. Why are people four-handed, eh, eh, Fanny? Now, suppose Nicholas were calling me. Where would I be at 9.45, eh? You'd be sitting at the telephone, Henry. Of course I would. I'd be ready. Hmm. You would have been ready for hours, Henry. <laughs> well, I certainly look forward to 1950, when you aren't going to do any fussing. Yes, yes. Have you got plenty of wood in here, Dad? Uh, yeah, yes, yes, Clifford. Plenty of wood, thank you. Anybody bring in the morning paper? By George, no. I haven't seen it. We forgot it this morning, Clifford. I'll get it. What time is it? It's uh, uh, 9.47, Clifford. Uh, 9.47, and nobody's here yet. Uh, Paul Vest? Hey, Cleaver, Paul dress yet? He's gone, Henry. He doesn't hear you. Paul won't even be dressed. We'll have to send somebody upstairs for him, and he'll come wandering down in his robe and slippers with his hair all topsy-turvy. Now, Henry, you aren't going to pick at Paul on Christmas. I don't pick at people, Franny. I was merely remarking that he won't even be dressed, which seems likely. That's characteristic of his behavior lately. He's either dressed up like Bo Brummel or not, not dressed at all. What? Franny. What's the matter, Henry? When did the phone ring last? Why, I don't believe it's rung this morning. Why? It hasn't rung all morning. No, Henry. Why? It's out of order. Oh, now, Henry. That's just what would happen with a long-distance call coming from London. That would be characteristic of the telephone company. Poor Nicholas trying to get through to us and the phone out of order. Hello? Hello? Henry, you have to dial operator. Yes, yes, yes. I know you have to dial operator. Uh, Does it make that little buzzing sound? I can't hear a thing. (laughs) Little rain of the night may be, and down go the wires. A dial operator, Henry. I never saw anything more fragile than telephone wires, merest little breeze, and they all collapse. The phone isn't dead, is it, Henry? Queer noises in here. Oh, hello, operator. Well, why didn't you answer? Huh? I thought the line was out of order. It wouldn't surprise... Huh? Well, I say it would... Uh, uh, operator. No, I, I don't want any number. I was just test. I say I don't want any number, whatever. Henry, she's working on Christmas. Now, don't fuss at him. Oh, oh, operator. I, I say, operator, I, I didn't want a number. No, ma'am. I, I was merely testing. And, operator, allow me to take this opportunity to wish you a very, very merry Christmas. Yeah, there, how was that? We're Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Claudia, Hazel, Joan, come in. Yes, yes. Uh, Merry Christmas. We got here in plenty of time, I hope. Look fine after our strenuous day yesterday. Oh, and thanks again for the wonderful <laughs> present. Oh, isn't this nice? Here, get up here by the fire. Let me take your coat. Now, Mother, you just sit down and relax. We can take care of ourselves. I'll take our coats and hang them in the hall closet. Uh, Claudia? Thanks, Joan. Thank you, darling. Uh, uh, sit down, my dears. Oh, Joan? Yes? When you come back, bring that handkerchief that's in my coat pocket, will you? Okay. You haven't got a cold, have you, Claudia? <laughs> no, Mom. But I know I'm going to need a handkerchief when Nikki calls. I'll probably do nothing but blubber over the phone. Won't it be exciting talking to somebody way over in London? I hope you'll be able to hear. If the rest of the family doesn't get here pretty soon, they're going to miss that call. I can't understand why... Now, Henry, there's plenty of time. <laughs> Always crying before he's hurt. Oh, here's your handkerchief, Mother. Oh, thank you. This is one of my Christmas hankies. Isn't it lovely? I think there's nothing. Well, I rounded out the old man. Merry Christmas. Oh, Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Merry Christmas. Oh, well, well, this is almost where we left off last night, isn't it? How's everybody? Did you get the paper, Clifford? No, I didn't, Dad. I thought I'd better go up and tell Paul to come on down first before you got too jittery. Well, what do we want with an old paper on Christmas, Henry? No, my dear, I had no intention of reading the paper. Well, I should hope not. My, how nice that suit looks, Paul. Getting to be the snappy dresser, isn't he? Yes, yes, yes. Well, Jones, you get everything you want for Christmas. Oh, I'll say I did, Uncle Paul. And your present was wrapped so pretty. I could tell every one of them yours by the way they were done up. Well, he didn't do it. You can bet on that. (laughs) I know it. 
Uh, well, I thought all the gifts were done up beautifully. And wasn't the tree lovely this year? Oh, Clifford, turn the lights on the tree. It'll make it seem more festive. Okay, Mom, no sooner said than done. What time is it, Dad? Uh, getting around to ten o'clock. Uh, ten minutes to. I wish Jack would get here, though. It's possible that Nicholas might get through to us a little early. How's that, Mom? Oh, that's nice, Clifford. We could phone over to Jack's house. No, no, no. Uh, we don't want our line to be busy. We know it isn't out of order. Henry checked with the operator. Jack Barber and family reporting. Hiya, Jackson. Hi, Nicolette. Doesn't Nicolette look pretty, Mother? Oh, sweet. Well, you're on time. Bone hasn't run yet, Betty. I thought I'd never get Jack ready. He's worse than all the children put together. Has my wife got me on the pan again? Well, I said Merry Christmas once, but I will say it again. Merry Christmas to everyone. Well, Merry Christmas. Christmas. The family all gather around the fire. Now, this is a real Christmas day. A happy day. Sit down, everybody. Sit down and let me look at you all. I think I'll be fine, you, Father. Henry, we're very fortunate indeed to have such a fine, big family. <laughs> yes, Henry. Hey, that was the phone. Oh, it's Nicky. Get in the library, Claude. Then you won't be disturbed. All right, everybody. What order are we going to go in? Well, I think Father should go first, or, or Mother. Yes, yes, then... Come on, Fanny. London calling. <laughs> all right, Henry. Don't get me all excited. Come on, let's all go in. We can sure. be quiet till it's our turn. How about it? Sure, come on. Hazel, Nicolette. All right. Hey, Paul. Yeah, I, I'm coming, Cliff. What's the matter, Father? Nothing. I thought I'd wait a little. It'd be a madhouse if we all crowd in there at once. Well, you look a little down. Oh. Well, you know. Well, don't let it get you. Maybe by next Christmas they'll all love Chris the way we do, and all of us will still be around the family hearth. Maybe. I hope so. But something tells me that this is the last Christmas I'll ever spend in this house, Cliff. The very last one. <laughs> just heard Chapter 13, Book 72 of One Man's Family, written, produced, and transcribed under the direction of Carlton E. Morse. The opening chapter of Book 73, entitled, What Does the Future Hold?, will come to you next week at this same time. Santa Claus visits the Quiz Kids. Stay tuned to NBC.